All right, hi guys. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about um, solving radical and rational exponent equations, but where there are, um, are involving real world problems. So let's take a look at this first one. It says a software programmer needs to write an algorithm for computing distance d using a formula that computes time t. The formula for time t is shown below. So here's the formula for time. So they're asking in part A, what is the formula for D that a programmer will use to write the algorithm? So basically, you're just using the same formula, but you're solving for D. So let's start with the equation, which is T equals the square root of D, I'm sorry, 2D over A. And we're going to want to solve this for D. So the first thing that I'll need to do is get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. So I have T squared equals the, um, uh, the square root and the square cancels. So we have 2D over A. And then now I need to get rid of the fraction. So I'll go ahead and multiply A on both sides just to get rid of the A from the denominator. A divided by A is one, so that cancels. So we have A T squared equals two D. And then the last step two and D are multiplying together. So you'll divide by two on both sides to cancel out the two. Two divided by two is one, so that cancels. So we end up with D equals A T squared over two. So this is the formula for D, the distance. All right, now looking at part B, it says the programmer also needs to write a formula for the acceleration A. What is the formula for A that the programmer will use to write the new algorithm? So now we're gonna use the same uh, equation, but we are solving for A in this case. So I'm actually gonna um, use the pink version of the equation because I've already manipulated it a little bit. If I'm trying to get A by, by itself, I would first need to uh, square both sides to get rid of the square root anyway. And I would have to multiply A to get A out of the denominator anyway and make it a numerator. So I'm just going to start from the pink equation that we had. A T squared equals 2 D. Now from here, you could see that A and T squared are multiplying together. So you could actually just divide by T squared on both sides to get A by itself. So A equals 2D over T squared is our equation. Now on this one, you will notice that the fraction denominator has a variable. So remember when that's the case, you have to say what value of that variable cannot be because then it would make the entire denominator zero. So if T was zero, it would make the denominator zero. So that means that T cannot equal zero. And remember that always has to be included as a part of your equation uh, solution. Usually what we'll do is we'll box all the same thing and just put like a um, semicolon uh, in between. So you have both the equation and then what the val val value of the variable cannot be. All right, let's try another one. So this one says the average consumption of tomatoes by Italians between 1980 and 2000 can be modeled by the equation T equals yada, 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 where T is the tomatoes in pounds per person and Y is the number of years since 1980. So part A says what equation can be used to calculate the year when a specific number of pounds of tomatoes were consumed per person. So basically we need an equation to calculate the year. So we need an equation for years. Remember year is Y. So in other words, this is asking us to solve the equation for Y to get Y by itself. So then, then we have an equation that just gives us well, y is equal to, we don't have to actually solve and move things over, we could just simplify. So let's write down the equation, t equals the square root of 22y plus 275. Okay, so the first thing again, I wanna get rid of the square root, so I'm gonna go ahead and just square both sides. So I have t squared equals 22y plus 275. Then if I want to get Y by itself, I'll have to get rid of 275. So I'm going to subtract 275 on both sides. So now I have T squared minus 275 equals 22Y. 
And then the last step, I will need to get rid of the 22. So I will divide 22 on both sides. And that does divide to the entire left side. Um, so it is t squared over 22 and 275 over 22, but that won't simplify in either of the terms. So I'm just going to leave it like that all together. So that is my equation and that is it solved for y. So uh, part B says, in what year were 20 pounds of tomatoes consumed per person? So they're saying the pounds of tomato is 20. So that means that T equals 20, and they're asking us in what year, which means what is y. So if T is 20, what is y? Okay, we just figured out the equation, right, for the formula for uh, the number of years, right? So I'm going to uh, just plug in T is 20. So 20 squared minus 275 over 22. And I could just plug all of that into my calculator. Of course, if I was doing it separately, I would do 20 squared first. Um, but, oops, I'm, I went down a little bit too far. Uh, but I'm just going to plug it all into my calculator all at the same time. So 20 squared um, minus 275. And that's all over 22. Okay, we got 125 um, over 22. So we want to write that as a number because we're solving for years. So saying 125 over 22 years just doesn't really make any sense. So I'm going to go ahead and um, write that as a decimal. So we have 5.68, blah, 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 blah. Um, let's go ahead with whole years, right? So they're asking us in what year. So you can't say the 5.7th year, right? You, you have to round it to full year. So this is uh, about six years, okay? Now, they're asking us in what year, not how many years, right, since 1980. So in what year? Well, the number of years is years since 1980, so it would be the year 1986 because it was six years since 1980. All right. Okay, so go ahead and pause this video now. I want you to try number two on your own. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, solve this problem. So it says Isaac Newton discovered how to calculate the minimum speed needed for an object to break free from the gravitational attraction of the massive body. This is called the escape velocity velocity, and is measured with V equals yada yada where V is the escape velocity, G is the gravitational constant, M is the mass of the body, and R is the radius of the body. So they are asking us in part A, what is the formula for R, the radius of the body? So let's go ahead and solve this equation for R, okay? Now, again, the first thing that I'll need to do here is get rid of the square root, so I will square both sides. So I have V squared equals uh, 2gm over r. Now I am solving for r, so I will need to get rid of that from the denominator uh, to make it a numerator, right? So I'll multiply r on both sides. So now I have r times v squared equals 2gm. And then the last step, right? R is almost by itself on the left side, actually. So I just need to get rid of V squared. V squared is multiplying to R. So I will go ahead and divide V squared on both sides. So my final answer, the formula for R is 2GM over V squared. And V cannot be 0. All right, looking at part B, they're asking us now, what is the formula for M? So I have to isolate M, the mass of the body. Now, again, um, like the previous one, it, it is easier if you've already worked through some of it uh, to start at a place that makes sense. So I'm going to start at the green because I have no fraction, right? I got rid of the denominator and I got rid of the square root. So I'm going to start with um, the green, r times v squared equals 2gm. Now, I am solving for m and both 2 and g are multiplying to m. So I'll go ahead and divide by 2g and 2g divided by 2g would be 1. So that would leave m on the right hand side. So the formula is r times v squared over 2 times g. And of course, g cannot be 0 because if g is 0, 0 times 2 would give you a 0 in the denominator. So that is the formula. 
And um, if you like, like you know, some, uh, it, it might be nicer to write the formula with, you know, what the formula is on the left, the mass of the body equals, and then the actual formula on the right hand side. But it's not necessary. Obviously, both of those are still the same thing. Um, but you know, you might want to write it, rewrite it so that your um, formula is on the right and um, the what the formula is, is on the left. So M equals and then what it equals. All right. So I'll give you another chance to try one more. And actually we have uh, a couple of like challenge questions at the end for you to try as well. But go ahead and pause this video now and try number three on your own. All right. So number three says the swing of a pendulum measured in seconds S can be modeled by the equation S equals blah, 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 where L is the length of the pendulum in feet. And it asks us, find the approximate length of the pendulum that makes one swing in 3.5 seconds. Round your answer to the nearest hundredth of a foot. Okay. So they're asking us to approximate the length. So we're finding what is L. So we're solving for L if uh, the time, right, in seconds is 3.5. So they're saying if S equals 3.5, what is L? Okay, well, that's pretty easy. Let's just go ahead and plug in 3.5 for S and solve for L. Now we could actually just solve for L here and um, without plugging in S, but Y might as well just plug it in and then solve it as we're going. So we don't need to write like the formula. So um, I, um, two, two times pi uh, is multiplying to this radical. So I will need to get rid of that first before I can square both sides, because if I square this now, then I have to square the two and the pi, which is not a big deal, um, but it's just easier to get the radical by itself first, and then you can um, go ahead and you know square to get rid of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide by two pi, and that'll get rid of that. And I am rounding to the nearest hundredth, um, so I will eventually do that and plug it into the calculator for right now I'm just going to leave it like this and then plug it in all together once because if you round a little bit and then you round again it's not as accurate of an answer you know 99 10 times out of 100 you would still be able to figure out what the correct answer if it was like a multiple choice situation or something like that and if it was like a fill in I wouldn't like you know mark it wrong if you were like 0.1 away from from the answer because you approximated twice but it is just always a good um idea to always just if you can leave your approximation to the very end so anyway so that's our left side and then on the right side um we have the square root of l over 32 and then we want to get rid of that square root so i'm going to go ahead and now square uh, both sides and so again i'm just going to plug this in in the calculator um, all together at the end. So I have all of this and remember pi is not a variable, right? It's actually a number. So all of this will give me a number. Uh, so yep, on the right hand side now I have L over 32. And so then of course the last step is just to multiply 32 on both sides to get rid of that denominator. So um, my final answer is L equals well, I guess not my final answer, 32 times 3.5 over 2 pi squared. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the calculator. So I have 32 times, and then I'm going to just use parentheses for that times. I have a fraction in the numerator. I have 3.5 in the denominator. I have two and then pi button is right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that. Of course, I can use um, 3.5. 1, 4 for pi, but using the pi button on your calculator will obviously give you a more exact answer. And then uh, all that parentheses is being squared, so I will raise that to the power of 2. So we end up with 9.929. We are supposed to round to the nearest hundredth of a foot, so that would be 9.93.
So the length is about 9.93 feet. All right, so we have a couple of uh, challenge questions here for you to try. So go ahead and pause this video now, try both of these on your own. All right, so uh, number one says the formula represents the kinetic energy. So this is a little weird because Ke is what represents kinetic energy. So you might want to think of that as two separate variables, but you're really using just two letters to represent one thing. So that's really one together. So don't think of K as one variable and then E as a separate variable. It's kind of like those two letters together are a variable. Okay. And then, um, M is the mass of the object and V is the velocity of the object. Which of the following gives V as a function of K, E, and M? So you're looking for V and saying as a function of K, E, and M just means that you're defining V using K, E, and M. Okay, so uh, I will first uh, write the equation down. Of course, Ke equals one half mv squared. So we are solving for v. We, we need to find what is v equal to. So I will go ahead and multiply two. That will get rid of the one half. So I have two Ke equal to m times v squared. Now I need to go ahead and get rid of m. So I will divide m on both sides. And so now I have 2ke over m equals v squared. And then, of course, the last final step is get rid of the square by square rooting both sides, okay? Now, normally when you square root both sides, right, you would say, oh, well, plus minus, right? But this is a real world problem, so you're not going to have any um, negative velocity. So that's why here we will only have the positive square root of 2ke over m. So our correct and final answer would be b. All right. And um, looking at number two, we are solving this equation. And this is actually um, a kind of a review question from uh, 7.5. Three, uh, I'm sorry, 8.3, where we were solving these questions. So we're just solving for x. So I will go ahead and first multiply 7 to get this um, fraction exponent expression on its own. So now I have x minus 11 um, to the power of 1 half equals 7. And now I want to get rid of that power of 1 half, which is really the square root, right? So I will get rid of that by raising both sides to the power of 2. Just like I would normally get rid of a square root by squaring, same thing, right? This is really one half means that um, the denominator is two. So that means that there's a radical with an index of two. So anyways, uh, square both sides, we get X minus 11 equals 49. And then um, add 11 on both sides. So our final answer is X equals, uh, no, 60. Okay. And remember, anytime you are looking at an equation that is a um, radical equation or a fraction exponent equation, you always need to check your answer. So let's go ahead and check this guy. Uh, plugging in 60 minus 11 to the power of 1 half over 7, does that give us 1? Well, 60 minus 11 is 49, and then the square root of 49 is 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, so 1 equals 1. Yes, this is a good and valid solution, so that is our final answer, 60. All right, guys, so I hope this video was helpful, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!